Full Service Radio is proudly supported and hosted by Simplecast, the easiest way for a podcast creator to publish and distribute audio on the internet. For more information, visit Simplecast.com. Peace and welcome to the Edible Activist Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa L. Jones, broadcasting live from the lobby of The Line, D.C. On this show, you hear from the voices of dynamic Black people and people of color in the agriculture, food justice, and healing space as they share empowering food narratives and perspectives that stem from the land, all while exemplifying the spirit of activism in their own edible way. Let's get started. And welcome to the Edible Activist Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa L. Jones, hosting or broadcasting live, rather, from my sister's balcony at her apartment with Centuria L. Jones, another L. (laughs) Hey, guys, what up? So um, I've never had my sister on my show. I've had my mom. Uh, Many of you know the story of my mom, and I talk about my sister, how she um, navigated this journey with us um, in learning about health and how it's connected to food and, you know, long story. And I'm sure I'm sure you will hear it over and over and over again. But I'm here because my sister has taken a a liking to, to growing food. And it's a pretty hilarious story because um, she literally um, just threw some seeds out one day and, and started growing food. And to be truthfully honest, I never wanted to admit this to her. It really is just a testament to life in general and just doing things and watching it flourish. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. But anyway, we're going to get to learn a little bit about my sister and um, actually, as we, we look um, from, our, from the balcony of her apartment, and we're, we'll get into what she's been growing. Um, but hey, sis, hey. Hello. <laughs> Tell the folks where we be. Where are we at? Well, right now we're in downtown Silver Spring in my apartment. Yay. And so what do you do? Uh, Professor. Professionally, I am in cybersecurity as a privacy officer, and I work for the government, like a lot of other other people around here. <laughs> you know what? I typically refrain from asking, "What do you do?" But you know, it's it's. I did that because uh, typically a lot of the folks who are on my show. Um, you know, are in the entrepreneurial space or they're a farmer, they're an activist in their own right, um, they're with a nonprofit. And so I'm just um, just wanted to to, you know, let the audience know what you do professionally, but also that, you know, you're an edible activist and you you've been you've been um, just throwing some seeds out and growing things. But <laughs> Um, both you and I are, are really just big fans of, of our grandma, both of our grandmothers actually. Um, but specifically, you know, we're, we're talking about grandma Catherine in Mississippi, where my, both my sister and I were born, though we were raised in Maryland and just watching her grow. And, um, we were actually in, in Mississippi not too long ago and, um, grandma was actually in the backyard pulling her potatoes and just doing what she does, like <laughs> muscadine vines, potatoes, <laughs> all of that good stuff. Peas. And she was just putting it in her pocket as she was pulling it, right? Picking and pulling. Picking and Picking pulling. And pulling. So, what made you start growing? Quite honestly, I just like to see things grow whether it produces any type of vegetable, it doesn't matter. I just, I've always taken a liking just to see things grow from the ground. So I figured that one day while we're at our parents' house that you all were inside, I had some seeds 
cucumber seeds specifically in a bag. So I went outside and I just threw the seeds out in a patch of dirt in front of the house. And I was like, okay, they'll grow, if not, whatever. I didn't expect vines to start growing and we not know what it is until a neighbor came over and specified what it was. And I was like, oh, oops, they're cucumbers. <laughs> a lot of cucumbers like a cucumber vine and she thought oh maybe a bird dropped them and i was like oh no i dropped the seeds so once the vine started to grow i was just like oh that's nice and then the flowers started to grow on the vine and then the cucumbers started pop popping up i mean like several cucumbers i think we had over like 20 probably like so. 20 good crispy cucumbers and that was that those vines i want to say maybe like three or four vines came from like three or four cucumber seeds and they were organic cucumber seeds i had a cucumber one day i cut it open took took a few seeds out and just put them in a the bag i was like i'm throwing these in the ground somewhere well the backstory to the backstory is that one day i noticed the vines were growing and I kept asking my father, I was like, what is growing? Like y'all didn't plant nothing there. I didn't plant anything there. My good friend, Mabel, who actually lives around the corner from my parents, who has a beautiful greenhouse, you know, thought it was a thought it was pumpkin or squash or something. I can't remember. I don't not pumpkin, but squash, whatever. And so I said, Mabel, like, no, like no one planted anything. And Centuri's giggling. You can't hear her. And so um, she was just like, well, she was like, maybe a bird. She was like, a bird could have dropped the seed. I was just like, that can happen. A bird can just drop a seed. She was like, yeah. I was like, okay, okay. Here I am questioning Mabel, who's, you know, straight from India, like grew up on the <laughs> land, has an entire, you know, um, hoop house, not hoop house, but a greenhouse. And so I said, okay, fine. The other neighbors who live directly across the street from my parents who are actually from the Philippines and they grow a ton of everything. And I asked her, I was just like, you know, our neighbor, the neighbor said a, a, a bird dropped, could have dropped the seed. She's just like, yeah, yeah. And so that was, we came to that conclusion. A bird dropped the seed. So I'm on the phone with Ceteria one day, my sister, and I was just like, listen, I'm like all hyped. I'm like, man, there are cucumbers growing in front of the house or something else. And Centuria goes, wait a minute. Are those those cucumber seeds I just like flung in front of the house like maybe a month or so ago? And I was like, really, girl? Really? Really? But to her credit, those things have been growing, growing, and growing. And so with that said, you know, especially, you know, during these these um, times of COVID, what has just just doing it, just growing it, what has it taught you in this space? Because we actually have other friends who have been growing stuff too, you know, as you can probably see from on, on Instagram, Facebook. Right. right. But what has that taught you in these times? Is that has that made you feel more empowered? And actually, I know the answer because this girl is is trying to bring up, bring every seed she can. Like she wants to do everything. But how everything. how has it empowered you just knowing that like, hey, like I did that and like those cucumbers, that's my doing. From the creator though, himself. <laughs> amen, amen. Well, quite honestly, it makes me feel great. I feel like I don't I don't have green thumbs. I have green hands because those cucumbers inspired me to try some peppers on my my um my balcony. And I live in an apartment. I was like I can get some buckets, you know, throw some seeds in there if it's just that if the, if it's that simple. So I I tried it. I was like I I got this. I'm I'm growing. I'm a grower. I'm a brown grower in an apartment. <laughs> so I put some hot pepper seeds in a bucket, watered it, talked to it like it was a child. All of a sudden, I have plants <laughs> growing. You're so damn animated. <laughs> and peppers, like peppers growing. I have like six peppers on my plant outside on just my little, my little balcony. And I know my neighbors are like, why is she all outside every day? She's talking, it looks like she's talking to the plants. I do, I talk to my plants, I, I feed them water. They also get rainwater. 
and bam, I got like six pretty peppers and they're starting to turn red. One is bright red. So I'm, just, I'm like, okay, let me try something else. Let me try some tomato seeds. Got those growing in a bucket on my balcony too. I don't have any tomatoes yet. I got the plants, but no tomatoes. <laughs> we working on that. But I just feel like during these times, you know, people are running to the store, trying to grab all the vegetables they can now more so than before the pandemic, which is weird. Cause when you go to the store, it's just like they're out of squash or the cucumbers are small, depending on where you go. So I was like, let me try to grow and eat what I grow. And with these cucumbers, well, I've had like two of them, and my parents <clears throat> and my sister have had like twenty I of them. I actually haven't had any cucumbers. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Mommy I has not back. shared them with me at all. So my mom and dad must have been scarfing them down then because I think I've only had two out of the bunch. But it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I, 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 I um definitely learned something. Like being home, being able to take care of my plants, even my my house plants. I, you know go to Lowe's and look at house plants like which plant can I get now but that's from another family member who got me hooked on house plants but it just makes me feel good to know that I can put a seed in the ground and whether it produces a vegetable it's still sprouting a plant so I just feel good just seeing something green grow from a seed that I planted amen girl you preaching you preaching I'm preaching today. I will say that her peppers are beautiful Thank you, you all will see them. They are beautiful. You did a great job. And every day, just about every day, she would she sends a photo and it's like, girl, we just saw this yesterday. <laughs> but I have an appreciation for that because we get to see the growth. And I see that you're really in tune with what you're growing and you're outdoors, just even on your balcony, making it happen, you know edible activist in your own right feeling empowered that's right <laughs> as she's rocking her shirt <laughs> so I, I definitely commend you and you know I had a little baby attitude because <laughs> you know I was homegirl over here I was struggling to grow collars and I but I grew some collars okay my pole beans you saw did amazing they did she had a lot of pole beans I did and I had my share too saute them with some sweet onions Mm, yeah yes very good very good I, I try to hide my credit for her but she gets kudos to her for the pole beans thank you I appreciate that but just the fact that you just threw them out there it really was like it spoke to my life in a way because I'm a very structured person and a lot of times I feel like that gets in the way of my growth because I'm just strategic by nature. I'm organized by nature. I can't just do things. Like some things I can just do, but a lot of things I can't. And I was just like, maybe maybe I just apply that to my life. Just, just throw it out there and just watch it grow. Amen. <laughs> that sometimes you just have to, you have to not only, you know, it's that saying, that box saying, you know, step outside the box. You know, but sometimes <laughs> you really need to evaluate. No, you know what? Don't evaluate the box. Just walk around that box and just live life. <laughs> She's so <laughs> in All right, so when are we gonna get Jody? Jody, my Jody, which is my nephew, which is my sister's son. Has the, do you do you bring him out there to connect with the plants? I tell him to talk to the plants. What does he say? He says, "Oh, okay." <laughs> But he doesn't talk. But regardless, children see your parents do things. And who knows? I mean, he may grow up one day and be like, okay, my mom grew some stuff in her, her patio when she really, you know, she really got into it. So you never know what your children will pick up from the habits that, you, that you've obtained throughout life. So, I mean. I'm so glad you said that because that can very well be Jody's origin story of how he, if, if he decides to grow his own food, and, and hopefully he does, you know, but that, that this can be a defining moment. Like, hey, like we live in an apartment and my mom grew peppers and tomatoes on the balcony. And that I remember that. And those are a lot of stories that, that come through, that I hear from, from, you know, our edible activists and alum, like my mom had a garden, you know, my dad grew food or my dad was always outside. Like, 
in the yard, in the garden, like those are the stories that we hear. So you're right, like kids, you know, I can't say more more often than not, but you know, kids, they do what they see their parents do. So hopefully he picks up on that. He may not eat any of them peppers, but. <laughs> Listen, those are hot peppers, so I don't know if I'm gonna eat any of those peppers. <laughs> you can just give them on the meager, I'll make a little stew or something. Mm. I'll think about that. So what are you, so for my, my final question, what are you looking forward to trying to grow next? Okay, so I'm so <laughs> excited because, because I asked you, even though I think you were trying to, you know, keep it from me, I kept asking, where can I get some non-GMO hybrid seeds? You didn't ask Collard me about non you I, I asked her twice, you all. I didn't really get an answer, but that's false. Be, you know where I got my, first of all, okay, let me shout out the homie Rondell out in Northeast DC where I got all of my seeds from. And I know that I gave you some of those seeds and I told you about the homie Rondell. So I'm just, I think his, he's sustained and rooted or rooted and sustained. He's on Instagram. He's the homie. He hooked me up with my seeds, you know, the same seeds in which I grew collars and pole beans. Thank you. Thank you. And he gave me a ton of other seeds that I still have. So I did tell you that, but proceed okay well let me retract okay well so my my next project which i didn't get my seeds from rondell but next time rondell i'm there so i went online and found some non-gmo collards two different types of collard seeds so my plan is because i follow see now i'm all on youtube watching all these farmers who plant things in buckets plant uh vegetable seeds in buckets and being that I have a patio, I, you know, one guy, I forget his name and I follow, real real good guy. He um, He's a brown farmer, but he plants, he, I guess, I don't know if you want to say harvest, but he uses buckets to grow collards and kale and like all different types. I didn't know there were so many di different types of um, kale and collard greens. So anyway, that's my next project, to empty out one of these buckets and plant some seeds, some collard seeds here, and also some collard seeds that I might might just accidentally toss out at my parents' house. So um, that's my next that's my next project because I know that those um, do well. I think when it starts to get cold, so I'm prepared for that. Have you sent Grandma any photos lately of your peppers? Yes, I've sent her photos, and we've had plenty of phone conversations, and she always says. Okay then, girl. Gone, girl. That's nice. That's real nice. I'm proud of you. I said, well, Grandma, well, you kind of inspired me because we walk in your backyard and you say, oh, I just got a few tomatoes. I'm like, Grandma, I'm counting like 25, 30 tomatoes. I said, that's great. She was like, yeah, well, I guess I reckon so. So... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a whole muscadine vine. I'm like, Grandma, I, I like this. And she just picking her peas and putting them in her pocket, going back in the house. I make me a meal out of this. And so, she said, it's good eating. She said, it's good eating, y'all. But yeah, my grandma, and then also my, my parents and my sister, they, they inspire me because my mom is always, who's the vegan, uh, follows a strict vegan diet and loves to try to grow something. You know, it's just an, a true inspiration that, you don't have to have a lot of space to to have a significant, you know, produce or, you know, you, you, you can take something small and make it just deliver multiple, you know, you can be pieces abundant. of food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, abundance. Mm -hmm. And these cucumbers are good. They're so crispy and... They're like little cute Yeah, cukes. and they're kind of fat and they're hidden too and that's what I like like I like seeing I like picking them even though my mom gets to the cucumbers before I can pick any but um you know it's that's just that's the person who won't pull the weeds but um, I won't I don't weed hmm. and I don't do bugs but I, I do a whole nother story <laughs> this girl does not do bugs like she will punch a bug in the face okay <laughs> just to get away goodness gracious well I'm proud of you and you know I I'm a firm believer that agriculture is is really it teaches us lessons it's a reflection of our own growth and 
you know, again and again, like brown and black people are rooted in agriculture. We are the soil and it's just in our DNA. So go girl. Thank you. And I look Thank forward you. to more meals at your spot. Okay. Oop. 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 <laughs> she tried it, y'all. <laughs> well, I will ask, I would tell you to, to, to ask you to tell people where to find you. But, you know, if you want to connect with my sister, you can just hook me up. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you can hit cheap. me up. Hit me up. <laughs> hook me up. You can hook me up, too, with some good produce. But hit me up. So anyway, sis, I appreciate you being on my show. Just You're welcome. Chatting Thank with me. Thank you for having me. Very informal. But, you know, that's what we're doing these days with our mask on. Indeed. Stay safe. All right. Peace, everyone. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. You can catch today's episode on fullserviceradio.org, as well as iTunes and Spotify. Be sure to follow Who Talks in Color, that's just the letter N, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for all updates. Are you an edible activist? Sure you are. Come join me on the show. Just shoot me a DM on the gram or connect with me at foodtalksincolor.com. And if you're interested in sponsoring this podcast, let's connect. Peace and blessings. And remember, in the words of Baba Tariq Adunu, there is no culture without agriculture. Thanks for listening to this program on Full Service Radio, broadcasting and recording from the Line Hotel in Adams Morgan, Washington, D.C. Full Service Radio programming can be accessed live and archived on fullserviceradio.org. Our talk programming is available on most podcast apps like iTunes and Stitcher, and our DJ sets are available on mixcloud.com slash fullserviceradio. Full Service Radio features over 30 weekly shows and over 50 local hosts covering every topic imaginable. If you want to be a guest or get involved, email us at info at fullserviceradio.org. Follow us on Twitter at Full Service RDO, on Instagram and Facebook at Full Service Radio. Thanks for listening.